Hello and welcome. My name is Michelle Trott and today I am joined by Priscilla Doros-Singorenko to discuss the potential applications and open questions surrounding bacterial extracellular vesicles. Priscilla is currently working with EVs as a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Auckland and is also a scientific content writer here at ISON. Her postdoc work continues from her PhD, which focused on the activity of Staphylococcus aureus in infection and in biofilm models. Priscilla, thanks for joining us today. For those who are unfamiliar, please could you give us an introduction to bacterial EVs and tell us what we know about their general function. EVs in general are powerful signaling vehicles, and same as mammalian EVs, bacterial EVs so far have shown very different roles, including the most important one, communication between bacterial cells. It's been demonstrated that bacteria can transfer cell density signals for quorum sensing, virulence factors for pathogenicity, antibiotic-resistant genes to endure antibiotic treatment, or essential nutrients like iron for survival in unfavorable conditions. Therefore, bacterial evolution and their EVs have adapted to have biological significance in different scenarios. That is fascinating, and with these many roles, there must be so many different ways in which you could study bacterial EVs. What would you say are the most common areas of bacterial EV research? Uh, well, naturally, bacterial EVs have been mainly investigated regarding their effects toward human health. However, I would say that the role of bacterial EVs in infection is still a very nascent field, with most common topics including molecular characterization of bacterial EVs, understanding of host factors triggering production of bacterial EVs, how bacterial EVs are recognized or taken up by different host cells, responses of these host cells or immune cells, and involvement in the progression of the infection. Another beneficial angle for human medicine is the use of bacterial EVs as vaccines. Bacterial EVs are safe, non-replicating structures and native bacterial EVs can have similar antigen composition as their parental cells. Therefore, highly immunogenic and able to induce protective responses for a specific pathogen. In addition, bacterial EVs can be used as platforms to present heterologous antigens. Surface or luminal antigens can be bioengineered to be expressed endogenously in bacterial EVs or added in already purified EVs by an array of techniques. This multitude of options makes them a very versatile and promising tool. Okay, so it sounds as though there is a lot of promise and also a lot of room for more basic research to better understand these EVs and uh, how they interact with other cells. Uh, through your experience in fundamental research, what has been your most exciting or significant finding so far? More than a result from a specific hypothesis or question, it's the realization that bacterial EVs have an enormous variability Bacterial fast growth enables a quick cellular response to environmental changes, triggering also rapid turnover to cargo-adjusted EVs able to cope with the new conditions. So this results in heterogeneous EV population heavily influenced by experimental dependent factors. We have worked on isolating EVs from numerous bacteria with different isolation methods, with different culture conditions, concluding that the pre-analytical variables have been critically underestimated single, small different steps in the EV production stage or during the isolation can generate a complete different molecular composition in bacterial EVs, which has significant implications in the reproducibility of data and meaningfulness of the results. It is fascinating to think that bacteria could adjust their EVs so rapidly to help cope with new conditions. Um, and so what research questions are you focused on at the moment? Um, for now, we are paying attention to a relatively unexplored area. We are aware of the possibilities of interactions from bacterial EVs towards the host cells in the context of pathogenic and beneficial bacteria. However, we don't know the role of host EVs in bacteria at all. And this is incredibly interesting in a complex environment like the gut, for example, where evidence has pointed out that humans and their microbiota have co-evolved. Microbiota help human health in many aspects, and an imbalance of microbiota is also correlated to many conditions. However, the degree of host regulation of the microbiota function is much less studied, or even unknown specifically in the EV-mediated angle. 
We also keep working on isolation or identification of bacterial EVs within complex samples, like different biofluids, where there are abundant host EVs and contaminated nanostructures. This is to develop and improve diagnostic opportunities of infection or bacteria-related conditions. And I believe you have also studied bacterial biofilms. Please, could you explain the biological relevance of bacterial biofilms and how EVs might be involved? Sure, biofilms are predominant natural growth mode in bacteria. So biofilms are bacteria aggregations embedded in an extracellular matrix with specific gene expression or metabolic networks different from their suspended planktonic cell counterparts. Biofilms are a source of chronic infections with a high resistance to immune defenses and antibiotics, resulting in harder challenges for infection eradication. It has been shown that EVs are abundantly present in the matrix of some bacterial strains, suggesting adhesion or structural role, and that the biogenesis and molecular composition of biofilm EVs compared to the planktonic EVs can be quite different, suggesting differential functions of biofilm-derived EVs. More research is needed in biofilm EVs, in particular pathogens where biofilms are serious and common threats, like Staphylococcus aureus or Pseudomonas aeruginosa. That is fascinating, thank you. And recently you studied possible EV host interactions in the context of urinary tract infection. Uh, could you describe the goal of this and some of your key findings? Yes, from our previous work in characterizing effects of pre-analytical variables in bacterial EV composition, we noticed that composition of EVs released by uropathogenic Echerichia coli strain and not a probiotic one were different depending on culture in abundant or restricted amounts of iron. Also, we saw that E. coli EVs had significant amounts of associated RNA, unlike EVs from other bacteria, and with other research groups showing that RNA elements of bacterial EVs could have direct interaction with the host cell regulatory networks, we decided to further investigate the iron responsive effect of bacterial EVs RNA cargo on host cells. For that, we took a novel approach to separate the effect of RNA from the rest of the molecular cargo in bacterial EVs. We extracted the RNA content from bacterial EVs and used an inert transfection vehicle to incorporate that RNA content into infection-relevant cells, like bladder cells. Not only we found that the very low levels of bacterial EVs RNA can cause signature cytokine secretion, but also we noticed a critical methodological drawback that could have been overlooked by many in functional studies. Significant amounts of highly immunogenic endotoxin may be co-extracted with RNA, even using commercial kits, which can result in misinterpretation of results. It sounds as though there's a really important consideration to keep in mind for functional studies in the future. Finally, what do you think are the most promising real-world applications of bacterial EVs? I think the most promising applications of bacterial EVs are those focusing their use as therapeutics, drug delivery vehicles or vaccines. For example, considerable research has been underway to determine immunomodulatory properties of bacterial EVs derived from known probiotics that can be used as supplements to improve human health. Bacterial EVs can also be great drug delivery vehicles with advantages that include some existing and optimized recombinant protein expression systems in bacteria, capacity of bacterial EVs to deliver molecules of hydrophobic and hydrophilic nature, controllable size of purified bacterial EVs, and easier scalable and cost time effective production of bacterial EVs. And finally, vaccines based on bacterial EVs are powerful candidates to generate innate and adaptive immune response against a pathogen without the associated disease. The target pathogen for the vaccine can be native to the bacterial EVs or be a completely different one, like vaccines which incorporate heterologous antigens into bacterial EVs. As examples, published studies have demonstrated bacterial EVs vaccines with heterologous antigens of bacteria, parasites, and even viruses. In summary, all these applications share the need of more specialized research, but also must overcome common challenges. In large-scale bacterial EV production and isolation, removal of potential toxic contaminants, interbatch bacterial EV variation, and shell life stability. Well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. 
Priscilla, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. I think you have really highlighted the exciting potential applications of EVs and we look forward to seeing this uh, continue to evolve in the future.